<coughs> هنا جوين هلو um, one of these tabs has what we want So open another window. Les jeux sont faits. Jerry. Okay, so let the gang's almost all here. Thank you. The invite links are confusing to me, as always. Oh, there's all sorts of people that we haven't seen for a while. Kiri! <laughs> oh, and Akira's here. Damn TCG week. They all like, you know, they let them out of their traps or something. <laughs> They're scurrying up now. That's the thing. <laughs> but, oh, well. Can't TCG get enough. Uh, just, just, it's a your TCG withdrawal. <laughs> when you can't so get enough TCG, guy. come to the, the rats meeting. They talk about us sometimes. Um, uh, I invited, uh, speaking about that, I invited Guy over to this meeting because he uh, um, uh, was asking for guidance how to deal with the uh, RVP role and the RV uh, uh, conceptual message uh, with his Rift uh, ID. Um, but uh, I think he will not be able to make it, as it seems. All right. So, and we have... Kira, Dave, Jiri, Sarah, Hank, Ned, and Wei. Okay, so I um, believe we're all happy with this diagram being renamed because I uh, renamed uh, from conceptual flow to composite device. Everyone, most people said yes. So I'm just going to uh, improve this. Are you, yes. Is anybody sharing a screen? Oh, I'm sorry. That would be a good idea. Um, oh, there we go. That's the one. But yes, that was this good thing. Work. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, come on. Here we go. Confirm. Uh, and Wei pointed out that we messed up the one of the um, renames that we did before. Um, I can't remember what it is now. It's a blur. But uh, I think I got enough consensus that we I just merged that one. So we're back at the list of issues that were open. Um, and I think that we should maybe just go through them by um, sort by oldest and see if we can remove some of these from being open anymore. Fair enough. Yep, sounds good. So 4th of March, back when we didn't never heard of that pandemic. Um, second paragraph, the trust model, third sentence. Does it possibly make sense of that? 
Well, I can't imagine that that's even in the same place anymore. <laughs> um, elaboration on introduction term consisting in layout, and that was merged. So can we assume that that work that you have been made happy by this? By this, I this... can only oracle that this might be true. I have well, certainly it doesn't apply to a, a existing PR anymore. So okay. there's so that. So let's close this. Okay. Yeah. Good. Sorry for not cleaning that up in time. Apparently, that is uh, me. More thorough definition of endorser or endorsement. Wow, I think feel like we have been de dealing with that for many weeks now. Um, so yeah, I put a comment in the bottom of this one just a couple minutes ago saying, uh, it, yeah, PR number 150 was the addition of like the reference value stuff. And so what I wonder is if that addresses a bunch of this or what the gaps are. I feel like we've done it. Yeah, because if you look at uh, Hank's point number two is closer to the approach that we took. Because right, we augmented what other types of verifier inputs there are, right? There's the appraisal policy for evidence. There's the reference values, which is an addition. And there's endorsements. And that's what I think that PR 150, my opinion is, that addresses approach number two. And you can see Lawrence has a slight preference for second option. So we, my we, hope is we, we could close this one. And and because I think there's another issue that I think it was Ned that opened uh, later on. And so I'm I'm hoping that uh, everything in this one is either addressed or attracted by a different issue that we'll get to later. Okay, so I think I agree with you. So I'll just say we dragged Lawrence's preference there. Okay, so have a preferred serialization format. And I think we mostly got to um, won't fix. Yeah, I agree uh, with that. Uh, this point. So um, um, and I know that I do, I know I contributed some text at some point to say that this didn't matter. So let's do that. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah, a particular protocol may have a preferred serialization format, but I don't think the architecture should, was my opinion. Yeah, and that I think we, I think, yeah, and that was the point I was trying to make, that I really wanted, I really wanted particular protocols to, to have selections, but architectures just didn't work for what we're going to um, there. So, okay, so let's deal with these next three. Class of claims for messages that transit entities involved in role interactions. Ooh. Ned, do you remember this? <clears throat> if I remember correctly, this was in the context of sorting out the lead a tester conversation in a composite device. And right. there was the question of should, given, given that the I can't remember calling it now, but a sub-attester protects its own evidence. There was the question of, does the verifier care to know that the sub-attester is somehow, you know, connected to the lead attester, and should the lead attester represent that as a claim? It says, I, I'm connected to you, claim, basically, I think is what the what that's trying to say. Do you think that we accomplished this? I wrote that we, I thought we did it on June 30th. Uh, I thought we dealt with it. Just in terms of the text for the composite device? Yeah. That could be, I, I wanna. All right, I'm gonna close it. And maybe you'll come back and realize upon fresh rereading that it, we weren't happy, but I think we all need to do a pass. We need to publish the document and then do a pass as if we'd never read it before, which is hard right. to do, I know. Yeah. Sounds reasonable. Okay. Sections 4.2 and 4.3 should use similar conventions for section names and fingers. This is the one that should already be closed because the one that you just merged is the one that closes this one. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Yep. 
What are roll compositions? Is that still in there? I don't think it is, but we should check. Okay, checking. Roll composition does not show up in the document. Composition. Device competition. The only composition only shows up once as device composition in uh, referring, I think, to composite devices in the second last paragraph in the introduction. It sounds like it's done then. Hank yeah. is Hank. Yeah, Hank's here. What do you think? Okay, close. I, I'm fine to close this. Uh, the, the role composition problem was probably introduced by me, but we have the entity role, uh, well, composition now pretty much fleshed out. Yeah, so you also, see, we had this PR, so that's yeah. probably good. Yeah, you can see Ned and I both agree it can be closed back in May. We should, yeah. we should have closed. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, load this. Come on. This is my browser getting slower and slower, and I don't know why. <laughs> and I have to restart. You're sharing. Um, yeah, but you know, I'm sh I'm sharing using a Firefox instance to share a Chrome tab because I've discovered that this works less crappily. Um, <laughs> and all of this okay. started around Chrome version 84, and we're now at 86, and it's not getting better. Um, yep. And I'm about to about to abandon Chrome, but. Um, anyway, um, I have learned that it's better if I have all my browser windows on the same workspace. I, I, I think it's some, as I said, I think it's some big lock. I think it's going into through the UI big lock to render stuff, but whatever. Um, implicit trust, replace pull request 61, can you edit? Okay. Uh, new text, let's, what was 82? Oh geez, that's uh, that's a probably while ago. closed or, or or yeah, thing. Place that is most certainly closed. Edit. So this is definitely um, closed. Yeah, I just read that was the one that we edited. Eighty two is the one that we edited in about um, unsigned evidence being conveyed inside a uh, right. authenticated protocol. Yeah. Okay, so I think we did that. That's good. All right. Confusing phrasing in the. Uh, machine learning oh, use me. case description on June. Oh, oh that's from happened. Kathleen. That's a pull in from Kathleen's review still. Mm -hmm. I added question. This is, uh, I think, the cut core of it, right? I'm just looking up in the document to see what it says right now, see if this still applies or not. Feel free to. Section 3.2, okay. confidential machine learning model protection. That's what I assume it refers to. It's kind of, it's kind of to know. Inferences in the written description. The root of trust captures so inferences of the machine model, model, model uses evidence. I don't get the impression the machine learning is involved at all in the evidence, but rather that I thought it was about the fact that I won't let you have the model until you show me that you won't disclose it. Uh, you are correct, Michael. That was the intent of the section is what you just said. But machine learning models about whether or not the device is, is uh, trustworthy would also be an interesting, yeah. you know, innovation. Yeah. <laughs> right, but we don't have to have every possible use case in here, right? This was no. a kind of case with yeah. one, one paragraph each, but yeah, this is a, you don't get the ML model in the first place until uh, the verifier trusts you. All right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's both, so the model typically will reside on the verifier role. Uh, every contribution or co uh, conveyance of the model itself to other uh, roles is a implementation detail, I assume. Anything else would not make a lot of sense here to elaborate on, I, I therefore think. 
Sarah, uh, you are here, uh, uh, and probably, and maybe you are involved in the machine learning pro uh, procedure of evidence. Would you agree, or is it out of scope of your work? Uh, I I don't do any machine learning. No. Ah, okay. I mean, it it isn't really a machine. It isn't necessarily specific to machine learning. It's just. No, but I think the confusion was that Kathleen thought that the machine learning model was involved in the producing of evidence. Right. So, right. right. So, I mean, that's under, I don't think we should, I think there are two separate use cases, and this one is not 100%. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I would say you could substitute the machine learning model with any file and it, have it be relevant. Yes. Yeah, or a policy. It, yeah, that that is true. Um, this is just one of the cases where that file is more like code than uh, data in a sense, right? Yes. I mean, you you could argue that the ML model is data driven, but still, uh, it, it affects the operations and it basically controls what's going to happen. So it's essentially like code. So, so similar to you, if the if the file was say JavaScript running in a browser, that would be another apt analogy. So sure. So you could have right. a and, and on the other side of it, it's just a movie that you want to, which you, which is completely yeah. data, right? It's just this one happens to be a, an actual use case that uh, manufacturers have, uh, multiple manufacturers have asked for. So, right, yeah. and I think it's good to have it there because it it makes it clear to them that they are included, um, even though they can't figure it, they were included already. But anyway, yeah. Yeah, the only thing that I could possibly change here in the actual text, it seems like she's um, indexing on the word inferences. Um, and it does use the word inferences in one place. And that would be the only possibility would be a reworded to not use that word or something like that. But, so for uh, example, desired, a device desiring to run an ML model to do inferencing. inferencing yeah, so for example, yeah, it's delete to do inferencing. Yeah. Did you could just to running to to just to run a ML model is what you're saying and remove the word <laughs> for a thing. That's the only thing I can think of. I don't know if that would help or not, but at least that would because uh, you can see does the ML because you can see in Kathleen's comment she mentions uh, inferences multiple times. But you can see I think it would help to talk about inferences in the written description, which it does. Well, yeah. So do you want me to just remove the word to do inferencing? Infer what do you think? Uh, I don't think it adds a lot to the sentence. I, I'll put it on yeah. the screen here. Um, yeah. Sorry, let me. Uh, yeah, uh, reasonless uh, inference. Machine learning does not, in general, uh, use this strategy of inferences. It could be prediction. It could be learning. It's a yeah, training yeah. a model. So right. it's a subset. All right. So I think we just delete those three words if everybody agrees. Does it look like she was saying, oh, that's mentioned under a tester. I would like to see that talked about in the description text. I don't know how I interpreted her comment. So. so this is what I'm proposing? Yep. OK. Um, nope. Oh. OK, so let me just. Sorry, my for confusing comments about residing on the verifier. By the way, I apparently forgot what this use case is about. <laughs> so. No, Michael Summer was right. You want the ML model? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, you don't get it unless you're going to protect it because the ML model, the person supplying it, or the entity supplying it, the organization supplying it, um, doesn't want to give it to somebody that's going to leak it. Yeah, but it doesn't have to come from the verifier. It can be coming from any role. Like a, yeah, none of the use cases yeah. mentioned verifier, right? They're all... Like yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let me just go back to this. Okay, so we're going to close that. Clarify. So can you see this one? Clarify. 134. I pushed that one, yeah. I made a one line change in master and pushed it. Excellent. Okay, so um, clarify applicability of attestation versus HTTPS TLS there. This is now we're getting into 
Yeah, I basically. think we addressed that the identity is providing uh, authentication for the secure channel based on that uh, uh, provenance or, or uh, identification of a testing environments happens. And then uh, we go and come to the remote attestation part. I think that is the uh, layout that we included in text now. And that would address this uh, issue here, right? So we did do this 153 already, which is merged. And then, uh, oh, okay, this is incorrect. Yeah. So he says that's incorrectly thing seven days ago. Uh, okay, so let's go back. Um, is not provided, then it provides a secure channel. So it's a I'm going to scroll back to the top. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what this issue is about. <laughs> yeah. Reviewing the trust relationship described. So there's this analogy to websites, and I don't, I don't really see what the relevant actionable point is, though. Yeah. I think so, this, so this is Gary. This is Gary here. I actually, even though me and Lauren uh, have been working for a long time to get an e-draft, I happen to disagree with them. I actually, in the old token binding days, I had a proposal on attested token binding, and token binding is a pure HTTPS construct. So. Okay. Um, I do think uh, I do think attestation can be uh, you know, can be used in the context of an uh, of uh, HTTPS. It's just that it's just that we don't have any uh, currently relevant uh, standards that are being implemented that actually address this today. So, so but token binding token binding means that you pull something out of the um, the HTTP session and then you attest you use that. Uh, to prove essentially a channel binding between the HTTPS and some other uh, yeah. uh, level, yeah, yeah, right? But, yeah, yeah. So you're signing. Uh, so they have this concept, you know, the TLS concept of exp exported key material. You right. sign that, but you can sign that with the word of trust. And if you're doing yeah. that, mm, you know, my assertion in the in that draft, even though it's not active because token binding is gone, you know, gone away as a as a relevant concept in the industry. Um, it was that if you're going to sign it with the root of trust, it makes no sense to it, it makes it, it makes no sense to whoever is the relying party in this case, the TLS endpoint, unless they can actually verify the uh, security characteristics of the, of the signing entity, which then attestation comes into play. So I think uh, yeah. you know I don't see I don't see as clear a distinction between the two as he does here. He's he's he, you know the way Lawrence has defined it, it he's he's clearly saying the way I read this is that. There's, there's there are two completely different things, and we should say security security at the uh, at the transport layer is not the same as at a station. I think you can actually I think there are already evidence of technology that can be used to enhance HTTPS that would actually um, that would actually leverage at station. So I, I think yeah. it would be I think you'd have to be very careful about putting in wording like that that would uh, you know that would prohibit but, future use cases. So, yeah, go ahead. So, so I don't know, I, I, I don't know what the actionable thing is here. I, I think that you could do token binding with signing of root and trust to enhance a, a client authorization to a server. Uh, but as you just said, it's meaningless unless you also have the verifier to say that this is a, this signed root, root of trust is actually, you know, relevant or useful. Um, yeah. So I don't see why I would do that. I mean, I, I, I don't see in the current ec ecosystem how I could do that with my bank until I have uh, industry standard verif verifiers until, in other words, this is like an endpoint of our of our work here, right? Um, 
We yeah. don't do this now because it because the, my bank has no idea about the about the trustworthy of my worthiness of my device, or vice versa, it, or vice versa, right? But the vice versa is 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 provided for by a different process, right? It's for the trustworthiness of my uh, bank. Yeah, but um, so first of all, I think I, I, I agree with Gary, um, but I, I to me I see Lawrence's main points as being the two paragraphs right underneath the bullets, which is the first two paragraphs on your screen right now. Uh, yep. which is technically it's not really specific to HTTP. I think the discussion of HTTP is kind of the red herring. I think that was his original point, which is uh, there's two different cases. Either, in his opinion, either you you, you think you know what the expected uh, uh, state of the other end is, and you'll only accept it if it matches, or you don't. And normally he's saying, oh, your web browser doesn't know what the expected state of the website is, and therefore it doesn't make sense to have attestation. Um, I disagree with that, which he actually mentions uh, in the second paragraph up at the bottom, which is if you have a certification authority, you know, somebody that signs that says your bank, you know, Bank of America or whatever, is actually trustworthy, and me as a browser or me as a banking application, I only trust it when that service says that that thing is trustworthy. That thing is acting as a verifier. So it's mm -hmm. not true that the relying party has to have knowledge of what the expectation of the attester is. That's the part that I disagree with in the two paragraphs. The relying party has to have knowledge of the the verifiers they trust. Correct, which is why it's yeah. actually solvable. And so that's why he says in the second up at the bottom, if it's a candidate for you know certification in either direction, right, then it probably lines up for device attestation, which is what you were just saying, Michael, completely agree. Yeah. And so that's why um, I understand his concern. I just don't think there's anything we should say about it. So I think this is a won't fixed. So he says at the bottom here, when attestation is applicable and when is not. Uh, attestation is not a replacement, is not a replacement or augmentation for HTTPS TLS, which which I think well, you said yeah, a little I, bit I, about. Yeah, I obviously said I disagree with that statement. Yeah, so, I do too. Uh, you know, yeah. Um, if you think about uh, the, the thing in, in the uh, side meeting before Rats was formed, I gave what I call the failure conjecture, which is uh, every <laughs> uh, every authentication use case is an attestation use case, um, which yes. nobody's disproven. And in fact, Peter uh, at a previous meeting says he thinks it's proven. <laughs> so uh, uh, that, that I think his claim there contradicts that conjecture. And so far, the evidence is not in favor of the claim there. Okay, so I'm going to mark this uh, as don't fix. I wouldn't say based on the failure conjecture. I would. <laughs> uh, agrees with this. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, but what about every uh, authentication yeah. can be. Including and, HTTP. Yeah. yeah. And, it, it, and, and the point is that we made was it's the verifier that uh, allows it to be used even in such cases. So technically it's true that it's not a replacement for because attestation still requires a transport and HTTP may be a transport. That'd be like saying TCP is not a replacement for IP. Well, yeah, you gotta have a transport. Yes, yeah. <laughs> um, but, and that's, but it is an augmentation for, right? Because you, know, you can do attestation with HTTPS or any other transport, right? They can carry authentication material. That apparently was one of the major revolutions in IPv3 to v4 was that we split TCP and IP. Apparently, I, I never it took me forever to learn what the hell v4 three even was. But wasn't it ST2? Uh, I don't know exactly. Was it ST2? But point yeah, is that they yeah. split the it was split the split the layer th three and layer layer four, um, which is of course well, how we got met NAT. Without that, that we'd have no NAT. Uh, <laughs> Um, I don't know what we're supposed to see. If it is the verifier, it yeah. is the verifier that allows um, the uh, decoupling yeah. of the relying party to know the state of the uh, test. Expected state. Uh, I mean, so, you know, reference values, et cetera. Yeah. The expect Okay, so yeah. we're going to close this. Uh, I just, I guess I'm going to put won't fix on it anyway, even though we we closed it. Mm -hmm. Just so we could find it again if we had to. 
okay, so we said this wasn't relevant. Um, this addresses 136. Is that what we just closed? 134. No. We just closed 134. Come on. No. <coughs> So I just want to remove the reference if I can. Clarify applicability statement. So I don't know. If, I don't know if I can remove that. Why are you? Why do you want to? Uh, because this is not the solution to one thirty four. It doesn't mean that it's not relevant unless you're saying that was a typo. I, I'm thinking it was a it was a typo in the end. Maybe address is one thirty six. I don't know how it well. It wasn't ah, I see now. Okay, now actually, I think this was uh, uh, one thirty four is referencing. One thirty four is referencing for there. Uh, no, it's not. But okay, you doesn't think? matter. It's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's 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 a forward reference from one thirty four, and we've clarified ah. it in one thirty four. Okay, so that's fine. If someone comes back and says, "How did you solve this issue?" I want to be. Able, I don't. I want to not say it was that one. Is the point, mm -hmm. which was which is discussed in that issue. So I think it's fine that we have the the discussion trail that says it wasn't wasn't did not do that. Okay. So Ned one fifty one endorsements definition is too narrow given PR one fifty clarification. Yeah, so I think what happened so with one the with the other uh, PR we <clears throat> defined we separated the net of um, so, so I'm trying to characterize so we had a definition for endorsement that was already fairly narrow and uh, the, there was you know Lawrence pushed back and said hey we're referring to these things called reference values uh, and they don't fit within the scope of the definition of endorsement. And so what are we going to do about that? So we said, hey, let's create a new role. We'll call it the reference value provider. And mm -hmm. and then <clears throat> and, and then we're done. Uh, but my observation is that it isn't that simple. There's other types of claims that a uh, supply chain entity might make that we haven't articulated. And um, if we if we try to articulate them, but we we identify them and then and then say, hey, there's these there's these other kinds of endorsements. Do we need to? Does that mean we have to create yet another role for them? So that seems like a slippery slope. And so to avoid that, um, it makes sense to just have a single role, which can have multiple types of of uh, you know, claims that it asserts, and then it's uh, that allows us um, set of, of messages that that could be generated from the that role. That's the, the Rev draft is interpreting the term endorser, and so by 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 tightening these definitions the way we've done it, we've updated some of the text in the other drafts that are. Take any more sort of open ended interpretation of what the role means. But I think that's because things like each are intentionally following what this does. So we set the precedent and they're supposed to match. That's why I mean, we're not trying to match what the other ones do. The other ones should be using it. This should be saying how they match the architecture. <clears throat> so let me just um, draft, and I think with your. Um, so I'm wondering, Ned, is this the one that you filed that we were in your in the email where you were talking about how um, the entity may supply claims to be put into the attestation results and maybe what you called implicit claims? Is this the issue that was discussing that? Um, there was a thread around. I think maybe that thread. I don't. I don't. I'm just trying to figure out is is that what this issue was tracking, or is that a separate issue? Is my question. Uh, I'm not sure what if we've defined implicit claim. Yet. I'm not, not sure what you what you mean by that, but there is the so, so, there is so, one one definition of implicit claims is that there's there isn't an expectation that there's reference value in evidence to match against. Right. I, one of your points in email was that it's possible that 
uh, a, a role, and maybe it's the endorser, I can't remember without checking your mail, could supply uh, claims about the attester that are to be added into the attestation results. So when I was, it never came into the into the evidence or something like that, and I was in you had some statement like that or whatever, and I couldn't. Not my question is just: Is this what you find? Is this the topic, or is this on a different topic? The issue that we're talking about now. It might be a different topic. Okay. Well, what I was, I'll ignore that. The thread that I'm referring to was basically observing that there's, um, you know, four, three, three, three or four types of claims that an a I'll call it an asserter would want to make, and. Mm -hmm. We've we've not spent much time sort of exploring this space, partly because it's out of scope for the working group. But um, by defining by defining an endorsement and reference value the way we've done it, it kind of closes the door on on other types of messages or claims that could be asserted um, by an. An endorser slash asserter. I don't know what term to use now. So, so a two we questions. Term asserter. So, so I have two questions that I wanted to to explore. Um, Nandis, first of all, you say it closes the door, and and I I I'm not saying you're wrong, but it's also possible that we just simply haven't said it's standardized. Um, so I just want to be clear whether we really closed the door or whether we just simply have declined to to uh, standardize these other things. We don't acknowledge their existence, which was okay. so we, we sort of said, "Hey, the architecture, even though it's out of scope for the working group, the architecture is not going to be constrained. It's going to describe this other this other you know corner of the diagram because it's relevant and important." But, okay. So we said, "Okay, let's define two things, and let's not worry about the third and fourth thing." Right. Which, was, which wasn't the goal. It was no. We want to open it up and say there are there are things over uh, here. There might be yeah. more than two. Okay, but fair we enough. closed the door uh, and said there's only two. Okay, so so the second point I want to get is you had suggested text, and I think we've actually asked uh, acted on it. So I pasted what's what I'm sharing here. I pasted your suggested text here, which is in the bottom. Okay, it was and, the old version that we then later subsequently updated to be the top version. Right. So then, so the top version is that some entity became an endorser. Okay. And then an attesting environment has become a testers, whether that's correct or not. Um, and the rest of it is essentially your text. So that's why I wonder whether we've dealt with the suggested text already. Um, it just happens to have been changed uh, slightly since. Um, and, and, and I'm, but I'm also not quite sure, given that text, if that door is still closed, in your opinion. It's still closed because the the endorsement is the the, the endorsement is is describing. So the definition that we changed was still focused on the endorse the um, the attester. And not uh, not the um, you know, so, so we use the, we provided the example of you know capabilities such as claims collection and evidence. Um, I'm trying to read what's on the screen here, but which of the two is the proposed new text? I think. This is your text but here. There is no proposed new text. The top one is the existing text. Yeah. So this is what you proposed in your ticket yeah. 24 uh, days ago. Okay. Yeah. So and okay. And original then, proposal. And then this is what was there, yeah. right. and it's changed slightly from we are text. So it looks to me like we adopted your text. Yeah. And but then some entity, be, typically manufacturer, became endorser again. Correct. Um, and and then a tester, the environment became a tester's uh, various capabilities. So that's why I spread the spaces out so that yeah. we could see. <clears throat> that it was one to one words with the rest of the right so so i so i originally said this is about the testing environments capabilities uh, which we all agreed but then we said we can't use that wording because we haven't introduced it yet yeah which may or may not make sense 
but then we changed it to a tester and now the question is well what is the scope of the attester is it the the, the the attesting all the attesting environments and the target environments given a composite device or do, do we are we just you know waving our hands we really actually meant to no, say we're testing keeping it open so we don't close that door <laughs> okay so I, I hear what you're saying about not closing doors and I and I and I and I and I find that this is often the case that there's a that that one of the problems of some some areas is that they regard IETF documents as design spec requirements rather than functional requirements mm -hmm. and so the thing about that is that a design requirement right it kind of says you'll do x y and z and that's all whereas a functional requirement says you'll do at least x o i and z mm -hmm. and if you do something else that's great as long as you don't compromise x y and z right yeah. um and and so so in that in my mind i don't think that doors are ever closed that way it's always open to vendors extending things and just a question of whether they want to extend them in in um or, or protocols, protocols, you know, sub 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 uh, standardizations or sub architectures of this can do more. Like a sub class. Um, yeah. So, yeah. so it can extend blah, blah, blah. Uh, um, so, so in that mind, I, I always say, unless we say you must never do at, uh, A, then you could always do A. It's just not, it's just not, not, might not be standard. And so that's why I'm, I'm worried it, where you say close the door whether we have in fact closed the door or we just haven't made it obvious that it's open. Uh, I'm with Michael on this one. I, I agree with that summary. Yeah. Right. So, <clears throat> so I would suggest Ned, if you would like to please think about this, I'm not going to close this issue right now. And if you still feel if, if there's something else there that fits in, then let's come back to it. So I During mostly want last call. Or yeah. Something. So I'm, uh, well, I'm, I'm mostly wanting to make sure we're all on the same page in terms okay. of our understanding. So I can't tell whether I agree with that or not, but I know I agree with Michael. So. And, and Michael, your point was what? That the door is never closed unless we have specific text text that says thou shalt not do a. A is always optional. It's just maybe not standard. Yeah, so Michael's we said we're doing it's not too narrow. Uh, vagueness, I mean, it, it, any vagueness can be used to add stuff to. I think is the overall yeah. point. But. Unless we say do not do it, right? Yeah. We say it's it's verboten, okay, to do something. Then it's always allowed. It's always permissible to extend the architecture either in a subclass, as as, yeah. as Dave so eloquently said, or in a some other specification or protocol to say, and we also do blah blah blah, okay? But that. The emphasis on the also, right? You do the thing that it says, and then you also do some other stuff that's not mentioned any place because that's in the other document, you know, the, the protocol document or whatever. Yeah. Okay. So, so in that case, we're setting a pre by defining a reference value provider role. We're setting a precedent that says if we do come up with some other um, message or you know set of claims from a supply chain entities. That we mm -hmm. ha we then have to come up with a role that matches that. The the reason for the reference providers uh, reference value provider is because you could have an entity you know a a implementation that does what that says without doing what the endorser part says. Or is that that was the also part? It says well if you do something else instead and not also then you're not an endorser if you don't do the endorsing part. You're just providing reference values. You're not endorsing any any attester, right? You're saying implementations of uh, of you know SGX are supposed to look like the following, but I'm not endorsing anybody else. I'm just saying. Right, but if we if we go if we apply that logic, then if there is if 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 we do describe some other type of claim, then you could say, well, if it doesn't um, we, fit we need another role because you know the. That's always that is always possible if you do not do what an endorser does by its current wording, and you do not do what a reference value provider does, and you do something else that's neither of those. It's not like you're doing one of those and something else too. You're only doing something else that's neither of those. Then you would need another role. I agree. So, so, but I also want to say that what we're arguing about is the the, the we're arguing about what about where the edge of the shadow is. Okay. Yeah. So we 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 want to have a bright light on 
the three primary attester verifier relying party and the relationships between them. And we're currently arguing over what's behind the verifier. How does the data get in there? And one of the things we said is that there's so many different ways that this happens today that we couldn't possibly standardize one or two or five ways. And so what we're saying is that we expect certain requirements from that side of things, but but we're declining to standardize it in this Correct. document, in this Correct. document, in this Which is why we use a different line style and a different box yeah. style and so on. Yeah, for, for right. those we're declining to do it in this document at this time in this working group. So you're allowed to go and violate any one of those three things. You can do it in another document, in another working group, at another time. You can recharter rats to do this later, right? Um, the, the point is that we're trying to say, well, this is the mouthful that we want to bite off and that that there's significant value in at least standardizing those two interactions between those three parties without worrying extensively about what happens behind the scenes in those parties. So we spend a lot of time worrying about how the verifier gets its world set up. And um, we need to write down those expectations that it is set up and blah, blah, blah. And there's certain things we can do, but that there's many ways of getting there. So to a certain extent, this is again, going into non-normative text of how do, you know, verifiers get data that they can you know validate or how do they know what to validate what their policy is yeah so <clears throat> it's it's how it ends up being it ends up making writing your you know documents a little bit more difficult because you, you, there isn't one term that just says that describes the that you can use to refer to the the, the the set of entities that might exist in the supply chain. You, you kind of have to say. I agree. You know, it's the. Or equivalent. You keep saying or yeah, equivalent. That's or all. Or equivalent, right? right? It's like, yeah. it'd be nice if there was a term we could come up with that, that is something other than an enumeration of all the terms that we've come up with for that uh, corner. I, I agree with you. I agree with you. It would be nice. Um, but it, it I don't think it helps us sat to sat get go forward to write protocols for the two primary interactions that we really want to standardize right i agree that it's frustrating from a documentation point of view but i'm not sure it actually has any impact on the 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 industry because they already know how they're going to do certain things yeah. or they so, or, or they're going to make it up anyway right yeah right so there there is the set of claims which are the um, you know, what maybe we're calling them implicit claims, which there is no expectation of evidence to match against that um, isn't describing specifically the 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 um, you know, claims collection or evidence aspects of the and that and you know, this, for example, using EAT as an example, there is a low, you know, there's things like location, location claims, there's identity claims, there's things things of that nature that are already part okay. of the, uh, uh, our defined set of claims, which could be asserted, uh, you know, for, you know, so like the, if you, if you, there's a bug, debug state claims, if those claims are asserted, if they're, if they're unchangeable and asserted by the, by the manufacturer, then uh, you wouldn't expect the verifier wouldn't expect to to, to have a, um, a matching evidence claim for it. You know, it's, you know, where does this? It seems like that no longer fits. Now, we could someone could argue, well, if you sort of parse this very carefully, and uh, okay, so, you know, so you're yeah. getting back into what I just said. This is not a design spec, right? So. So I don't know how the verifier works, and I don't think it's our job to define it, right? We're mm -hmm. saying the verifier is expected to do certain things, but we're not telling it how it does it. And, and that's where I that's where we're getting into the, the thing. I, we don't need to nail down the verifiers in this document where this works. And I, and I, and I want to also suggest that one of the reasons why we don't want to do this, aside from the fact that it's wrong for three out of four people that, that uh, would disagree with it, but that each of those four entities probably needs to actually do their own design spec for that piece because it's, it's, it's in their space. And we want to let them and we want to encourage them to put their own mark on it. 
because they're going to have their own verifier endorsement endorser ecosystem or equivalent. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So, right. So, so we're trying to enable those other verticals and that's why it seems like it's murky that, that, well, we don't know what it does, but that's okay because we're expecting them to, to write something else there. And the problem is usually when people think treat, try to treat this as a design spec then they get into trouble because they realize there's things that aren't standardized and they, they, and we can't standardize them. So I want to leave this issue open, Ned, because I want to I want to let you think about it and come back to us. OK, maybe during working group last call, maybe it'll be a good conversation as to whether whether it belongs here or whether it belongs in another document. Um, and I, I would like to have that conversation on the list, I think, ideally. And I wonder if we can close the other get to the other tickets before we lose Dave in three minutes. OK. Endorser endorsement optional optimization. And this may be the continuation of the same conversation. It is not quite the same conversation. This one he filed about that discussion we had about what goes into your into the verifiers uh, trust anchor store. Where yes. if it is not yes. a tester certificate, that's the indirect. That's you know, in maybe not indirect isn't the right word, but you know, that's where you put the endorser one layer of there. Um, yeah. and uh, that's what he filed this about, I think. Um, and I think he just filed it say, um, I find that confusing, and so he filed an issue. Okay, I'm gonna leave it open <laughs> for now, and I think we need a conversation with him at some point about that. Endorsements should be confidential when carrying symmetric keys. I totally agree. I don't think it matters in this document. That's what I was going to say. Is this is that a we statement for a protocol document? We, we don't this, say that it's mandatory, right? We don't say it's forbidden. Uh, I, we don't say anything, anything about how we don't say anything about how endorsements get to the endorse into the verifier. So. Right. Uh, this is one of the cases where we're trying to define something in the verifier, and I and I think it doesn't belong. I think it's uh, out of it's out of it's true, but it's out of scope for this document. I, that same opinion as Michael. Here, I'm going to add this new label: true, but another document. There we go. Since we've done this more than once, okay. So I'm just going to leave this open for now and uh, try to get. Conclusion: This was this was this reference values we discussed, and now we have two issues open, three issues open. So one that one from Ned, and two from Lawrence. So what I would like your blessing is to format the document as it is, and post it this afternoon as I don't know what version seven. And I believe we're ready for working group last call. Someone needs to make slides yeah. for the virtual interim. I have to drop in one minute, but uh, I agree. Uh, I, I, I endorse that conclusion. Yeah. Oh. Hey, hey, it's, 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 you do it's that with scary. a symmetric key. Yeah. Hey, it's no, scary. no, it's, it's very quick, asymmetric. Yeah. Gary. Yeah, please. I, I, I started to blast on a call at random like this for, for my favorite issue, but I know we're going to last call, and this is something that's come up internally in my, in my organization, okay. and I want to make sure that we're very clear that the document uh, says, says it gives the proper guidance. I've had a lot of requests to overload what I would consider attestation evidence with what I think belongs in a more generic protocols such as, you know, that, that aren't necessarily related to security assurances of the uh, security assurances are security related information um, that will be provided by an attester. Now, when I look at the document, to me, it was unambiguous. It, it, it basically, it says this is what attestation evidence is meant to be. It's not meant to be a generic, pro it's not meant to be, it constitute a generic protocol that would be signed sure. by safe means and root of trust. But um, I don't know if the independent reader necessarily uh, necessarily would come to that conclusion. Um, so right now the FIDO Alliance, when they've tried, yeah, what they've done is they've actually included additional data that they call client data into the challenge data that's presented for instance to a TPM. 
which is fine. I think you can put anything you want to in the challenge data as long as it uh, as long as it prevents replay. Um, but I don't think I don't think that's really the same thing as saying, oh well, I'm extending attestation evidence arbitrarily. You're not. You know, you're you're just uh, you're just refining the challenge data. Um, so, but I do, I do think like adding claims that are way beyond what we would consider attestation evidence, um, you know, is, 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 is you know, we, it, to me, I think the document reads today as that's not. Can you give me an example? Really Can you give us an example? Adding a claim such as what? That. Okay, let me, let me put it to you. Yeah, okay. Let me see if I can. Uh, let me see if I can give you an example. Um, okay, the the attester has been given, um, you know, a a timestamp, uh, a, a timestamp related to um, that that's been obtained from a subsystem that has nothing to do with the target of attestation. It's basically just a timestamp uh, obtained over the internet somewhere. But it says, oh, I want to, uh, I want the, uh, the attester, I want the attester to sign it as attestation evidence. So I'm just going to throw it in there. Um, so it could be like a timestamp obtained so randomly just... from your favorite service, service provider. Yeah. So I saw really some, nice. I saw some data. I saw some data out on the out on from some untrusted source. And I'm going to use yeah. my TPM to to uh, to witness it as part of my attestation. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so, sorry, Gary. Are you saying we need to add the words "challenge data" to the definition of evidence? No, I'm say, I'm saying I think the I think I think the document reads it, re, it currently reads to say that that is not. That is not, a, 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 you know, that would not be considered attestation evidence, and is out, and you know, we, and you know, it wouldn't even be in the scope of attestation. But um, other people, uh, uh, I'm wondering I, I read it as the, not. I I understand that if if Fido has a reason to do this, that this document would not forbid this, nor would we mandate it. Okay, so we can we can define claims or we can overload challenge data any way we want to, uh, and it can be included in the uh, and it can be included as uh, part of the attestation evidence is what we're saying. If if you want to well, have we, your phones look at the moon and tell us how much it sees and put that in as as evidence, then more power to you, right? I don't I don't. But, it may be hard to implement, but it may not. It's not. Uh, so, so can we go to the definition of evidence and t tell us what's wrong with it nothing i thought it was pretty clear I, 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 but uh okay, so, so it's unclear to me to us i think also if you are looking for help to to um uh reinforce your view or whether you're trying to change our view here here's here's what i'm saying Evidence is a set of claims, and this is what it says right now in the latest draft. Evidence is a set of claims about the target environment that reveal uh, operational status, health configuration, or construction that have security relevance. That last phrase is important to me, that have security relevance. Um, so that means that if it doesn't have any security relevance, like your example of like, okay, is it a full moon today or is it, or is it a half yeah. moon? Uh, you know that means that it that it's not part of evidence. It cannot be it cannot be included in evidence. Um, so I'm I pasted I, the definition that's in the editor's draft, which seems uh -huh. to be different from what you were saying. Yeah. So I've got it on the screen. I thought did I not get it right? I don't I see anything right. being shared. No. No. Sorry, it failed to share. Uh, let me try okay. again. Anyway, you pasted it. That's what I'm showing. So it includes um, configuration data, measurements, telemetry, or inferences. So I would consider phase of the moon to be telemetry or measurements. They may not be security related, but it might be that you need to prove you're outside with invisible view of the moon to be allowed to turn into a werewolf. I don't know. Okay. Could be the latest All right. Geo Geofenced game requires that you prove you can see the moon. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's fine. I, I think I'm looking at an outdated definition. Then. All right. Yeah. We, not... we definitely have changed these several times in the last two two months. Probably 
you know, back and forth a couple times. So uh, that's the current text, and I don't think it excludes your use case. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Thank you, guys. Um, I got to drop. But, uh, uh, then there's no need to file a file an issue. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I won't file an issue. Okay. Bye. All right. So Bye. I am going to format this and put it up as zero seven, and somebody is going to produce some slides for the virtual interim in two weeks, something like that. Thank you all. Um, are we having a meeting on Tuesday? I think not. Oh, we don't? Huh. I, I'm just saying, I don't think we need to have a meeting on Tuesday. Unless the ah, issues just... appear, right? I think, yeah. I think the homework is for everyone to go read the editor's right. copy, or and if that gets made into a draft, they read the draft. Yeah, I'm going to post it in 10 minutes as okay. soon as I get my lunch. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.